YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. The weather's horrible. We're stuck inside, basically, not necessarily by choice. And this, this is what we're dealing with. It's like a blizzard outside. Our trees are trying to rip themselves <laughs> out of the ground. And so what are we gonna do today? Let's open an airplane. Cause that's what we do here, is we open garbage bags with airplanes on this channel, among other things. Ooh. Now this garbage bag is tough. I can barely get it unstuck from the side of the package. All right guys, this is something a little special. I don't do a lot of stuff like this. So I'm kind of hoping it's as awesome as I think it's going to be. And it should hopefully be awesome for inside. So it's a Vito. I believe it's called the Aviator X450, which is an XK product. XK products historically, in my experience, have been very good. Um, somewhere between better than average to very good. Um, and when I say average, I mean average compared to other Chinese products or uh, American marketed Chinese products. Man, this garbage bag is taped on here, guys. You see this? Sometimes when Banggood sends you something, you have to deal with this. That's not very fun. But you know what? It's actually coming off of here. Believe it or not, it's not damaging the packaging. But you can see through it. So if you need to know Just what's- punch myself for you, YouTube. You're welcome. I know some of you wanted to do that. <laughs> Okay, so, and then they put this ridiculous yeah, glue on there. I hate that. Oh, jeez, what a mess. Somebody from Amazon, please quit and go work with Bangle <laughs> so they can figure out how to use a cardboard box with one piece of paper in it for packaging. And then throw in a 12-pack of your favorite beverage. Yes. <laughs> Just so it makes it halfway across the planet. Wow. That looks pretty cool. It's actually, this is supposed to be ready to fly. I'm excited to see how well it works. It's got the 3D 6G, which is the gyro system that they use. Um, it is a vertical takeoff and landing. Okay, so for opening up the package, they even show it flying inside. Wow, it's got a 3S pack. It's 11 volts, 1,000 milliamp hour pack. Wow. It's got the charger and a liquid crystal display radio, 2.4 gigahertz. Nice phone insert here, which we've come to expect from many different brands. However, XK sometimes does plastic. <clears throat> okay, it looks like there's a little bit of assembly required. I can live with that. Nice Changlish manual, that'll probably be useless. XK450, and for those of you in China, that's what it is. <laughs> um, all right, let's, let's take a look at this camera crew. For those of you at home that, oh, look, here we go. Got a charger. I, I kind of want to get the battery out quick because I want to see, this is really nice, guys. Balance charger that plugs into USB. That's pretty nice. USB charger. This is the model. The input voltage is DC five volts at 0 0.5 through two amps of draw. And then the output is 11.1 volts at 1500 milliamp hours. So 1500 milliamp hours on a 1000 milliamp hour pack would be approximately 1.5 C or 1.5 times the uh, output rate. So, or the, the discharge rate. So there's some tape here, not really sure exactly why that's there. That's weird. Just to keep the little oh, it's door to keep, from Yeah, it's to off. keep this, this is a magnetic hatch, I believe. Yeah, it's, a, it's actually a pressure fit hatch. Oh, look, found the battery. battery. Convenient. So that this must, this must be, yeah, that's what I said. It's a 3S pack yeah. and it's, oh, it's got an XT15. No, it's a it's a mini 30. It's an XT30 mini. That's awesome. I love that connector. That's so much better than just a regular XT60. Or excuse me, uh Oh man, that Velcro was was Ooh. stuck in there. But the whole Velcro piece came off, guys. So I'm just gonna plop that back down in there real quick. Cause it feels like feels like it probably shouldn't have done that, but I might have been yanking at a bad angle. 
So we'll just stuff that in there. Okay, so this is a 1000 milliamp hour, 11.1 .1 volts, 3S pack. You can tell it's 3 pack, uh, 3S pack because it's got one cell and then it's got two cells and then it's got three cells. Okay, and then this is the output, which the only bad thing about this weird balance, about this weird plug, which would be an XT30 Mini, I believe, is that I don't have any way of charging it on my balance configuration here without building a new, a new adapter and a new, a new adapter meaning something like this that I could plug in. And then when you balance charge, you have to plug in the balance lead and you have to plug in something to the main, um, the main discharge leads. Okay. So the charger injects voltage and current through the big discharge leads and then it uses the balance charge leads to monitor and then correct the differential and the voltage between the packs. So in our case, we'll be utilizing this for today. So why don't we get that started right now? So we're just using a standard USB plug, USB charger. We'll plug that into the AC outlet and you'll notice there's a light that's kind of flashing here. So I'll show you what happens. These are keyed. So if you try to do it backward, it won't work. Okay, so now that's got a solid red light. So we'll just let that charge. And in fact, before we get too much further, we'll actually grab and we'll charge, we'll, we'll check the voltage. Oh, okay. See how they sent it. <laughs> so when you out. at 11.8 that's pretty good actually it's a little bit high for storage charge but you see there's a big differential on that last cell so I guess we'll see how well this balance charges for us my guess is it'll probably do a really poor job uh, because it came in a ready-to-fly airplane they usually don't have the best charging equipment but at the same time if you don't have anything it's really nice because you've got everything you need in the box to start flying except for skills <laughs> That comes with practice. And double A batteries. And double A batteries. Millions of them. These have little pegs on them. And a little spot. Looks like these are probably going to make some. Oh, they just slide in. Okay, super easy. Um, there's a zip tie in here, guys, so be careful. See this camera crew? Mm-hmm. Do that. So I'm assuming I'll have to clip that. Um, got some spare props. It came with three spare props. That's a little bit strange considering there's an A and a B. Um, oh, it's because there's, looks like one A, one B, and one B. So they must have come with one B, one A, and one B. Okay, comes with a screwdriver and it comes with an Allen wrench and total of four screws. Okay. So we may have to cut this now. So you can, I'll just show you, you can use scissors if you want. I have side cutters too that I'd normally use for that, but it's a lot. Oh man, you can get through them just okay. Turn this out. You have to kind of walk it forward a little bit because it folds on here. Oh, that's surprisingly high quality looking. Oh, look at that, there's lights on here. Very exciting. Not excited about the way this is pulled up. Not excited about that. See that? Little plastic thing is supposed to keep this clevis from releasing. Doesn't look like it's gonna be very effective. Um, these stickers I had to press down. I'm sure you're gonna to wanna to check yours too. And then this holds the ESC into this boom. And it was kind of um, sloppily trimmed, so I'm gonna trim that a little bit better real quick. Because there's nothing I love more than getting cut on zip ties. Okay, and then the little foam pieces. Whoa, it's flexible. Little sharplets or winglets. This part's going to be vulnerable here. You want to be careful about that, even though it's flexible. The control surfaces, look at this. See this? They put tape in here to reinforce the joint, but it's popped up instead of being pushed down. I'm gonna just mm -hmm. pop that down. See what I did? 
So when I actuate this, I can actuate it down and then slide my finger along there and push it down so it makes good contact. This is a complicated aircraft. I can't believe they're selling it for what they're selling it for. Anyway, speaking of selling it, if you want to buy one, check the link in the description below. You can buy one for yourself. Of course, watch the rest of the video and see if it's worth buying. Okay, so the transmitter comes out the back. It's really easy. It's really easy to figure this stuff out usually, but it's nice to know if it's going to be packed well before you buy it. Okay, so this is a self-destruct button. <laughs> Just kidding. Sweet. Then we have the modes. Hey, look, they have mode markers. That's really nice. That's really nice. Then there's what would be places for other switches. This thing feels really cheap and light, but it does have an LCD display here. I know from past experience with the XK lineup. And uh, I suppose if you're in China, they probably put the batteries here. But since this uh, has the battery inside the aircraft, they're allowed to get that through customs a little easier, I believe. Um, because it's considered an integral pack. And just looking at the bottom, there's a flight controller. And looks like there might be a servo in the middle of that too. It's hard to tell for sure. There's a black box on it, but I can't quite tell. I'm not gonna open it up yet. And then it looks like right here, there's a spot to mount something. I think that might be where you could put an FPV camera. Yeah, I'm not sure about that, hmm. but there's this yeah. spot here. So we'll have to just kind of figure out what's going on with that at some point. But for now, uh, basically, I'm not even gonna look at the manual, am I? These slide in here. There's two of them, so let's just double check. They've got a little bit of an angle on them. See that? So I'm pretty sure they wanna go out. Let's see if the instruction manual answers that question. I'm gonna come around here. Okay. Reverse the front camera lens bin to load 5G 720p Wi-Fi image transmission. Hmm. Okay. So yeah, so we don't have that evidently in this kit. So you can switch this from mode one to mode two. That's nice to know. Um, these are where you can add extra tension to the sticks if you want to have them maybe resist movement a little bit. Makes it feel a little more solid if you ask me. I've done that before on my XK products uh, for their helicopters. And really all you're doing is you're tightening down this tensioning strap and then that resists, that resist, it puts a little bit more pressure on this. Okay. Shows you how to adjust stuff. Shows you which props go where. So this is gonna have basically drone style controls where you take it off and then you'll yaw it like, you'll yaw it like this and then you'll pitch forward and pitch backward and pitch left and pitch right. And then throttle, of course, will indicate how high up you want to go and then how fast you want it to go. And then when you actuate the button to switch modes, then it's going to change to the vertical flight mode where everything pivots. So we'll have to see how that works. The binding of a successful level, flight level is placed on the ground to ensure the aircraft tail to you head in front. Wow. That is not a sentence. Okay. So make sure the remote gear switch is in the M position. This one's a remote gear switch, I guess. You need to make sure it's in the M position. That's the M position. Okay. Um, aircraft level calibration. That's level calibration. This must be like how you can lock and unlock it. Because when you fly a multi-rotor or a drone, you have to initiate it because then the flight controller knows where to set its reference point for home and level and things like this. Um, okay, so this, this manual is not totally useless. On a scale of one to 10, 10 being very useful. You know, Horizon Hobby would fall like in the seven or eight range. 
maybe nine on a good one. And then XK falls in like three or four to five range. And then a normal Chinese products falls in the zero to minus 10 range. <laughs> so it's still not as bad as it could be. Um, XK does their best. They actually have some readable English. I mean, even though the sentence structure is poor, there's still, you can read, you can understand the words. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six double A's, which we will get right now. All right, so we got double A's. Flat side goes to the spring side. I'm gonna make this next explanation extremely short and brief because it just gets me all riled up if I talk too much about it. <laughs> but the weight of this thing is such that you, can, you may wanna check it before you fly it um, to see if you need to uh, do anything legally. So that's all I'm gonna say. I'm not a lawmaker, nor do I work for any out of control bureaucracies. <clears throat> the FAA, for instance. So anyway, we've got screws here. These screws, they come with this fancy little Chinese screwdriver. If you stick them together like that, it works really nice. And then you can ram them in the hole here. And then you can uh, fasten securely your vertical stabilizer, which is still a little bit tricky. Let's see if I can get it to go. It feels like you want to, but you're not doing it. Why are you not doing it? There we go. I got it. Got it, guys. It's a little bit tricky. This screwdriver is a little bit better than some of the Chinese screwdrivers I've had. The XK variety are slightly longer. <laughs> so if you're going for length, then XK is the way to go. These are extremely small screws. Okay. I know. Can't even focus on them. I'm sorry. Sorry. Right. Let's do it. Here we go. They'll see them when they get their garbage yeah, bag. When you get your garbage bag. But just seriously though, guys, if you fly this thing indoors, then who cares what anybody thinks. But if you fly it outdoors, then if you're in the United States of America, the free country, then you may need to get permission from the federal government to fly this. Which I can't believe I just said that out loud, but it's disgusting. So anyway, here we are. So now, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna turn this on and make sure things turn on. Okay, cool. Well, that's a nicer screen than on a lot of ones. Mm -hmm. So it's, so you can see the percentages on that display. That's very, very nice compared to what I expected. You can see the percentages that are live updating. Feels sturdy. Photo, function. Okay, so there's some sort of a function there. Stuck mode and takeoff, okay? <laughs> There's 3D, 6G. It indicates which mode it's operating within. This is mode two for me, so throttle, yaw, pitch back, pitch forward, pitch left, pitch right. Pitch back, pitch forward, pitch left, pitch right. Throttle, yaw, okay? So the next thing we gotta do is we gotta get the battery off the charger. The charger has a solid red light, which I assume indicates it's done. The charger is toasty, the battery is not. That's usually um, bodes well for the battery and poorly for the charger. Okay, so we're gonna take this little voltage alarm. We're just using that as a tester. Plug it in, three cells. They're at 12, which is a little bit low. 3.98, 3.98. 4.12. <laughs> okay, so just real quick pause. Uh, the chemistry in these cells, these lithium polymer packs, which are also known as LiPos, like to run fully charged at 4.2 volts. The problem with having one cell that's way off from the other two cells is that you're running them in series. So one cell feeds the next, which feeds the next, and then the whole thing works together in series to come out of this. So if you have one that's high, it's gonna stay high. And if you have two that are low, they're gonna stay low proportionately. So what'll happen is you're gonna have a really hard time getting this to balance out at the top end. I'm not saying it's impossible, but hopefully yours comes a little bit better balanced because if you overcharge that third cell beyond 4.2 volts DC, then the chemistry becomes slightly more unstable than it already is. So hopefully the charger is safe. 
LiPo safety tip, charge on something that's non-flammable. This is granite, that's granite over there. We have a, a fire, a, a gas stove right there, so it's a safe place to do it. Um, you wanna do it either in a garage or somewhere with a hard surface that's safe. Remember, if this burns, it'll burn quick, but it's gonna smell up your whole house and potentially catch things around it on fire. So don't put it on the carpet, don't lay it on the floor and then go to bed. That's dangerous. That's how people end up on the news. And um, don't do that. So instead, just enjoy the hobby and be as safe as you can for as long as we can do it. So throttle is all the way down. Okay, transmitter is on. We're going to plug this in. It is keyed, so you can only plug it in one way. Ooh, lots of flashing lights. Cool. It appears to me that it's already bound. But I could be wrong. And because there's props, you have to be a little bit careful here. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this down in here. I don't know exactly where the CG is going to end up because this is a unique flight platform in that it's a plane and a quad and a helicopter or whatever you want to call it. Okay, so we'll snap that down. And I know you're probably not supposed to do this, but I'm going to just rotate it down and away just like this. Okay. Nothing changed. Hands in a safe spot. Throttle all the way up. Throttle all the way down. Switching modes. Okay. There doesn't seem to be any response, so I need to reevaluate my binding procedure and I'll come right back. All right, guys, so I got it to work fine. Uh, I think what happened was I had my radio on so much longer before, so we'll just go through the process again. Power off. The plane or the helicopter whatever you want to call this thing drone quad multi-rotor it's not a quad it's only got three okay turn this on set it down get your hands in a safe spot see how i'm holding it in the middle plug it in you hear the high pitch beeps i'm holding my finger here to keep it under control throttle stick all the way up throttle stick all the way down light stop flashing now at this point, you can arm the system. So I'm gonna go ahead and tuck my battery leads down just a little bit to get them out of the way. Okay, so you wanna be right here just so you can kind of see what's going on. Yep. So it sticks down in a way, it's armed. Okay, see how it's tipping, tipping. We have differential thrust, we have tipping. Okay, so in order to take off, okay, so this the three three D six G is gonna try to keep things square and level. So this is not an airplane, so you gotta be really careful how you pick it up. You arm and disarm it by doing this. Okay, so when you go to pick it up, make sure you're mindful of where the props are and it doesn't move. <laughs> so. We'll put it here, we'll arm it again. We wait a second. And then you'll see the throttle stick has to be like quite a bit over 50 to work. So then it's like flying a helicopter. You have yaw, you have pitch, forward and backward, which flies you forward and backward. And I need quite a bit of trim forward because you want to walk toward us. There we go. And you can see the LEDs on the bottom. That looks pretty sweet. And it's, it's really pretty easy to fly. See, lots of authority there. Lots of authority. The three brushless motors are amply power. Powerful. Very good yaw authority. Rock solid control. And uh, it's a little bit loud, but not compared to some other quads. Now, I'm probably not gonna try to Enrique this, but... <laughs> As you can see, it gets around just fine. It's a little bit different than what I'm used to in that it pitches the, the front motors in that default setup. Okay, so as you relax the controls down to nothing, it eventually shuts off the motors because it knows it's just wasting throttle. So what's happening is this is similar to the configuration you'd have on a collective pitch helicopter. Um, if, you, if you had it just running full speed, you would just change the pitch to take off and land. So if you'll notice, there's nothing that happens from zero to 50, but then once you get past 51, it's gonna start doing things, but it's gonna make you arm it again. So we arm it and then we go up. 
Then we can fly it just like a normal fly. And it does just super, super good, actually. We may have to do some turbulent air to simulate, to simulate what it would be like outside, because doing it actually outside wouldn't be nearly as fun, because this thing would probably be in a tree like six miles away today. <laughs> Um, and you know what I mean? I would, I would do it, except that it's crazy, crazy out right now. Very good control authority. I mean, I don't have any doubts about this thing. I'm actually quite surprised how easy it is to control. Very cool. Really like the way to control. Normally, when you get down into an area like this, where you've got houses and different you end up getting into this strange, turbulent area. You just can't control it well. You can control this thing totally fine. Very easy to control. Very easy to fly. You can go around and clean up all the styrofoam little lights <laughs> that get dropped everywhere when you open this thing. Thanks. Let's see if we can fly under the table here. This might be a little bit technically challenging, but we'll see if it'll work. Because there's so much turbulent air. Sorry, it just doesn't take anything to keep it flying. So it's, ooh, you see that how close I'm getting to the edge? Mm -hmm. So now when you drop that throttle stick down below 50%, it's going to automatically disarm itself. So this is, I just didn't want to hit the side of my table. So I'm going to do that. Give it a little bit of throttle, nothing happens. See, nothing happens. You have to rearm it. And you'll notice that the tail is well protected, but the, the front ones are not well protected, okay? So, testing the throttle, I'm going to come in from the nose and grab it. Those lights are bright. Those mm -hmm. stickers suck. <laughs> Those things are already coming off, which is, which is pretty crappy. So now, I, I so badly want to fly this thing outside for you right now because it's, it's surprisingly easy to control, for one thing. We gotta fly down the hallway. Hallways are, are killers. Okay, so hallway, see. yes. Outside. Psh. All right. No, we're not gonna go outside. We need a new camera crew for that. It's it's too crazy. Outside. All right, so I'll just go with it for now. And you should be able to set up some expo and things like that on the controller. I'll walk the other way and come back to you and all of that. You coming? Sure. Okay. Doorways are the worst and hallways are horrible. Normally you don't want to go up and down a hallway with these things because you get all this crazy turbulent air. And this thing is doing a great job. I mean, I'm, 
I'm super happy with it. Okay, so I'm just gonna let it sit below 50% for a second or two. Very impressed, this thing is cool. And uh, I bet it's gonna fly really good. The only drawback on these sort of VTOL airplanes is that they're relatively heavy for their size compared to their peers that would just be like a differential thrust airplane. But I guarantee you that that little differential thrust airplane is not gonna be flying in your living room like that. Mm -mm. So um, hmm. I think given that the weather is horrifically bad, and I mean, it's, it's bad enough, I'm not even gonna go out there and fly right now. Um, we will probably hang on to this footage and the next time you see it, we will be walking out the front door. Guys, this thing is really cool. This is from XK. Um, what does this even say? Steer, steering gear. Gliding steering gear, is that what that says? I, I don't know, I've been confused about the stickers. Fighter, it's the, the, X, the X450, the X450 fighter with, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. There must be some, there, there's surely some things that are lost in translation. The box says aviator, X450 a aviator. Aviator. That would okay. fit on the wing. So I don't know, I think, I think what happens is a lot of these Chinese phrases that kind of make sense in Chinese, they don't translate well. And so we end up with these like weird, like what does that exactly mean <laughs> <laughs> moments? But so far, and believe me guys, I was on the fence on this one. I said, is it really gonna be that fun? I don't know, it seems pretty cool to me. There'll be more people here. Stay tuned. All right, YouTube, we're going outside. We're braving the cold for you. And when I say we, I mean, I'm braving the cold and my camera crew is going to make me pay for it later. <laughs> Yep. We had just a little teeny, teeny, tiny bit of snow. Arm it. Get into the throttle 50%. Oh, that is so cool. You guys didn't know you could clear the snow with this too. Oh, that is so cool. Let's go around that little mountain. Oh, that is so cool. Gorgeous. When you get around 50% on the throttle, it does kind of strange malfeasance where it thinks you're trying to kind of stop flying. Okay, so I'm gonna see if I can press the button. What okay. Did I, do? I don't know, nothing. Oh. Okay, so I'm going to see if I can go to... Holy crappers, that was scary. <laughs> Look at this. That's pretty cool. Okay, hold on. I got to see that again. Let's do it out of here. That is incredible, guys. It just goes full vertical. <laughs> it's really cool. Okay, now we're transitioning. <laughs> Sorry. Cut it out, camera crew. Now it's an airplane. Okay. You hear that? That's one of the decals. <laughs> that is really cool and weird all at the same time. Okay, we're going to transition again. <laughs> Full Sorry. vertical. And then into the, into the hover. That is so cool, guys. I'm really excited by how amazingly simple this is. I should have the camera crew do it. No, never mind. No. We're not gonna do that. Let's <laughs> land. Shouldn't. Let's land on the outer space planetary object, also known as snow. Oh, that is so cool. <laughs> let's get a close up of that. Oh, it's so cool! Out from behind the clouds. I just, it just looks like it's trying to flip me the bird. That's all I see. <laughs> That's all I see is just flip me the bird. Okay, let's fly. Airplane fly. It like flies good. It flies e decent. It's definitely, okay, now if I really want to be crazy, I could try to turn off the six, the six axis gyro. Let's see, let's see a pass. It's fast. But it's actually surprisingly easy to control. 
doesn't have a very tight turning radius. <laughs> that was kind of crazy. I was trying to come down and it just like, the flight controller was like, no so for you. Okay, I'm gonna try to do a slower flight here. Here we go. Oh, that's gorge. That stupid decal is annoying. Watch yourself on this patch, just in case. Vertical! Wow, that was cool. I transitioned at full speed, guys. You never know what's gonna happen. Man, that thing is fast, even in the, even mm -hmm. in the hover mode. Yeah, it's crazy. But it can be slow, like See inside. That decal? Yeah, that's that's hokey. You know, honestly, as far as I'm concerned, it's it doesn't off. need it. Yeah. The decal's ugly anyway. Yeah. I want to Enrique it, but I, I want to no. keep my fingers yes. too. Cause like honestly, this thing is freaking cool. It's got to be one of the coolest things I've played with in a while. Look at the look at the snow. That is so awesome. Look at this. Look at the snow as I get close. I know. I don't know if you can see it on the video though. Oh, you can. You got to be able to see it. Huh? That is so cool. <laughs> that you can definitely see. That's I love cool. that it glows purple. Yeah. Must be getting ready to transition. <laughs> That is awesome, guys. Really cool. All right, vertical. <laughs> oh, behind the pile. <laughs> what are you okay, doing? Oh, no, we'll go pick it up. <laughs> it doesn't self right. Well, it was trying to make it right. Why did you it's crash? Some weird thing. Why did you crash if behind you the hill? Stand, that's the crazy part. Let's see if it goes. Oh yeah, baby! That is so cool. Look at the mark on the ground. Oh, that is just the coolest thing. Hey, should I try to fly into the cave? <laughs> no, because I'm not walking over there. <laughs> no, because I'm not walking over there. I don't know, guys. This is pretty awesome, I would say. Look at the marks on the, the snow is pretty cool. All right, when I switched to vertical, it freaked out. So let's do it again. Oh, yes. You just have to have enough clearance, I think. Yeah, oh, I sorry didn't about give the it enough time to respond. Yeah. That is really cool. There we go. Man, that is just so cool. The middle setting is the forward flying setting. Guys, I've seen a lot of cool stuff in my RC career, and this thing has got to be one of the funnest little things I've seen in a long time. And it is really, really well behaved. Surprisingly well behaved. This is what the government is afraid of. <laughs> Transitioning airplanes? Transitioning airplanes. You know, <laughs> Sorry. With, with all the politically correctness, you think they'd be all about transitioning airplanes. But airplanes evidently do not have any they equal don't, opportunity no. of freedom in this country. Nope. <laughs> oh, that is so cool. All right, so I want to try transitioning from uh, vertical to just flight. It does all right. It just. Gets oh, oh no! And it gets a little bit dumb when it crashes. So are, let's go see what happens. Are we walking or pausing? Let's go surveying. Oh no. Okay, so regrettably, in my haste, Oop. I I done killed it. So whatever I did, don't do that thing. <laughs> But this thing is so cool that I have to figure out how to fix it. It's going to be awesome, guys. Look at the lights. It's amazing. Um, but uh, when it's like five degrees, you may not want to crash it into the uh, frozen snow. stone hardness frozen snow. Um, I'll figure out how to fix this, and I'll probably share that shortly. Come back for more.